Hey friends, Stephen Meyer has called me out on Twitter. Well, not really Stephen Meyer, by his staff. I've always found it weird when someone has a staff that posts on Twitter under their name. But okay, you be you, Mr. Meyer. Also, it's not really about Meyer, since he's just promoting an article by a guy named David Swift, who is criticizing me. But sure, Stephen Meyer is poking me at about the third remove, so I'll bite. He quotes this David Swift fellow saying, P.Z. Meyer simply uses complexity as a smokescreen to avoid facing up to the possible falsification of evolution. That's a strange and ironic comment coming from the intelligent design camp, since complexity is their one argument. It comes from the Swift article where I'm accused of contradicting myself and speaking out of both sides of my mouth, trying to claim evolution is both simple and complicated. Swift says, can there be a better example of trying to argue that whatever the evidence, evolution is the answer? Where the evidence is consistent with common descent, then of course that is the explanation. It's simple. And where the evidence is not consistent, show me an example of that, Common descent is still the explanation, but it's complicated. Meyer simply uses complexity as a smokescreen to avoid facing up to the possible falsification of evolution. Oh dear, he caught me. Although do I, I do have to mention that the evidence observed so far is consistent with common descent. He'll have to show me where it isn't. And he doesn't. He also hasn't come up with a possible falsification of evolution. In my defense, though, I will point out that evolution is both simple and complicated. Uh, this has been an issue in natural history for centuries, at least. On the one hand, we observe all these similarities between organisms that link them. Tetrapods all have similar limb structures, homologous bones making up upper limb and lower limb. But tetrapods also have all these differences. And you'll never confuse a bat's foreland with a whale's front flipper. A comprehensive theory has to account for both the unity of body plans and the divergence between them. And scientists have worked to resolve that dilemma for a long, long time. And Darwinian evolution does a fine job of it. To be charitable, the creationists observe the existence of complexity as well. I don't bring up complexity as a smokescreen, but as a fact, known property of biology that has to be accounted for in any theory. We can go all the way back to William Paley in 1803 in his book Natural Theology, where he's documenting all the complexities of, for instance, the human eye. Any biologist would agree. Eyes are intricate and delicate and contain a great many indispensable details. The creationists at the Discovery Institute would also agree. Life is so complicated they have a whole category of phenomena that they call specified complexity. Where we differ is in the explanation of the mechanism. Creationists like William Paley or Stephen Meyer want to argue that the origin of all that biological complexity lies in a complex creator an intelligent being who created all variations on life on Earth with willful intent. Scientists, beginning with Charles Darwin, instead propose that complexity can be generated from simple beginnings by means of relatively simple processes, common descent and heritable variation. Complexity is the inescapable observation of biological reality. The part we disagree on is whether only complexity can create more complexity or whether simpler phenomena can create increasing complexity. Another thing we disagree on, creations don't have any evidence for their creator other than pointing at complexity and asserting that that, in itself, is the evidence. Evolutionary biologists can instead point at all the evidence from chemistry and biochemistry and molecular biology that our proposed mechanisms are valid, making the creationist assertion factually false. So don't claim I'm contradicting myself when I say we have both complexity and simplicity. Complexity and outcomes derive from simpler rules compounded by chance and contingency. Swift has some specific details he wants to address. And unfortunately, 
His whole argument is contaminated with dishonesty. His claim is that the observations of early development in invertebrates contradict old ideas about development. Therefore, evolution is false. As evidence that ev biologists got everything wrong, he cites von Baer, who did not accept evolution, who found that diverse embryos shared morphological similarities in the 1830s, and Haeckel, who was a fervent evolutionist, who proposed the biogenetic law in the 1860s, which had already been refuted by von Baer and was shortly afterwards discarded by biologists, but not by pop culture, unfortunately, as further evidence accumulated that it was false. Swift tries to claim that we have ignored the evidence that contradicts our expectations by lying about our expectations. Does the early embryonic development of vertebrates support their common ancestry? On one hand, he says that of course the similar, and by that he means me. On the one hand, Meyer says that of of course the similarities of the vertebrate phylotypic stages are evidence of common ancestry. This used to make sense because everyone agrees that where organisms have evolved from a common ancestor, we expect their early embryonic development to be similar? That's sneaky in many ways. Early development and the phylotypic stage are not synonyms. The similarities at the phylotypic stage are most definitely evidence of common origin. I'd say in common descent, he'd say in God, but the variation at earlier stages is interesting. It says something about evolutionary change. You don't get to ignore it. We have all these differences between vertebrates at the gastrula stage, but somehow they all converge on similar forms at a later phylotypic stage. Why? How? What is the force that drives similarity? Intelligent design creationism has nothing to say about it nor any methodology to even approach it. Swift says, everyone agrees that where organisms have evolved from a common ancestor, we expect their early embryonic development to be similar. This is not true. Haeckel was discarded a century or more ago, and we don't expect recapitulation. We know that every molecule in every stage of development is subject to change, limited by the ability of the change to produce viable organisms. And then Swift quotes Rudy Raff. Raff acknowledges all of that, but then Swift has to do a little quote mining and removal of context to change the meaning. One might reasonably expect mechanisms of early development to be especially resistant to modification because all subsequent development derives from early processes. Exactly. That is correct. We expect mechanisms of early development to be resistant to modification, not impervious. Raff knew full well about variations that could modify early development. He was an expert in sea urchin development, and one of his classic papers is about two closely related species in which one developed indirectly through a pluteus larva stage, like most echinoderms, and another that developed directly from a large yolk egg to the spiny adult, completely bypassing the larval feeding stage. He wrote about it in Developmental Biology. It was explicit about how species have acquired radically altered ontogenies. Development in sea urchins typically involves the production of an elaborate feeding larva, the pluteus, within which the juvenile sea urchin grows. However, a significant fraction of sea urchins have completely or partially eliminated the pluteus and instead undergo direct development from a large egg. Direct development is achieved primarily by heterochrony, that is, by the abbreviation or elimination of larval developmental processes and the acceleration of processes involved in development of adult features. Direct development has evolved independently several times and in several ways. These radically altered ontogenies offer remarkable opportunities for the study of the mechanisms by which early development undergoes evolutionary modification. This is a topic on which Raff is a known expert who has written many papers on variation in early development, yet Swift is trying to marshal them as supporting his claim, we expect their early embryonic development to be similar. No, Raff most definitely did not. 
he actively denied it, as you'd see if you saw the whole quote that Swift mangled. So here's what Raff actually said. A view of development from an evolutionary perspective is both more confounding and more interesting. Early development is highly evolvable. evolvable. Oh, that's a hard one to say. Highly evolvable, even among closely related species. Embryos of two related species follow different early developmental trajectories but converge on a similar phylotypic stage. It is important to note that the phylotypic stages of related organisms bear major features of a, in common, but also have evolved significantly. Ah. My general feeling is that creationists like David Swift, Swift and Stephen Meyer really ought to keep Rudy Raff's name out of their mouths. I knew Rudy. We met several times at developmental biology meetings. He told me a few things, that he read my blog regularly and he agreed with my perspective on biology. So, so far, so good. And that he thought creationists were dishonest idiots. He was right as they keep on demonstrating. Hey, do you despise these creationist frauds or other apologists for ignorance? Do you wish more people would speak out against the phonies and fakers in our society? then why aren't you subscribed to my Patreon, like these fine people whose names are scrolling by? You could be on that honor roll for as little as a dollar a month. I promise to spend it on worthy causes, like covering the hosting costs of Three Thought Blogs, and treats for spiders, and gadgets for studying spiders. Join now at patreon.com slash pzmyers. Or if you can't afford the luxuries like a Patreon subscription, or you're content with just the stuff I post for free, uh, then do click on the like link. That's, that's enough to make me happy. Man, I'm cheap. I am so easy to please. So please me. Thanks, and we'll talk to you later.